Welcome to Little River Outdoors. This is Matt. This is, will be a documentary of my moose hunt in September of 2022 with Efforts Hunting Adventures. So I began my journey out of Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, flying to and through Montreal, Canada. Um, I ended up having to spend the night in Montreal due to a fiasco with Air Canada, losing my baggage and going through customs. I will say the customs agents in Montreal were fantastic. Uh, got me on my own way as fast as I could, but I did spend the night at Air Canada's expense and ended up flying out the next morning into Deer Lake. So here we are flying over Nova Scotia. The hurricane was starting to roll in and you can kind of see the cloud cover uh, starting to gather over the countryside. Beautiful sights, lots of water. This is on our final approach into Deer Lake. Uh, again, beautiful area, just lots of water. Trees are starting to change color slowly but surely. Looked everywhere for moose and didn't see one. That didn't give me very warm and fuzzy coming in, but I knew the hurricane was coming. So I probably had them bedded up for a little bit. But uh, final approach in the Deer Lake, a little windy, uh, quite a bit wet, and a uh, good, good preview of how the hunt was going to be for the rest of the day. Um, so Deer Lake's very small airport. I recommend lots of time when you're leaving because uh, there's, there's only one or two chick ticket counters to get out. Stay at the Deer Lake Motel. Um, nice motel. Uh, pretty decent accommodations. Probably on par with the Holiday Express. Um, about the same price as the Holiday Express. You know, common sink, um, small sink, bathroom. Uh, I had a king bed the first a uh, couple nights I was there, and on the back end, I actually had a double bed. So, a uh, refrigerator, microwave. Um, there is a restaurant in the hotel, and uh, it's okay. I'd say across the street is probably a uh, at the Irving Big Time uh, in the truck stop is probably a better place to eat, better service. Um, but you know, the restaurant in the hotel wasn't bad. Uh, you can recognize uh, the ho the service station across the street by the big moose sitting there. Of course, you got to get that token selfie with it while you're there. Um, again, good food over there. Um, good service. Deer Lake Motel was okay. Just wasn't that great of food, and the service was all right. Um, there was a a Tim Hortons and a um, A&W next door, as well as another service station. There was a wing place about a half mile down the road that you could go to to eat if you needed to. Um, but... Uh, for the most part, I think it was a good choice staying at the Deer Lake Motel and being a little closer to uh, uh, things that I needed for the uh, the trip. So our trip began with uh, being picked up at 7 a.m. by Efforts uh, Hunting Adventures. Actually, Lucas Efforts is the one that picked us up. And uh, we're paired up with two other hunters who I thought would be my campmates as we went through uh, this little journey to um, Peter Strides where we catch the float plane out. Uh, unfortunately, when we got there, we spent two hours talking to each other. We actually got split back up again. Uh, they went to a different area, and then uh, I got picked up again and went to another uh, hunting location, but the scenery along the way was uh, absolutely beautiful. Uh, the weather was nice. We just got through Hurricane Fiona and uh, a little rain, but uh, for the most part, it was a good trip. Um, I can tell you that just some of the sights are, are absolutely breathtaking on the way to Peter Stry's, uh, you know, southern um, uh, Newfoundland. But uh, here at Peter Stry's, uh, this is where the float plane comes in. You put your stuff in the dock there. And uh, Bob Effort himself is the one who flies that plane. Uh, it lands right here on the lake right there in front of us and then uh, comes to the dock. Uh, spin around and uh, load up and take you out of there. Well, we're here at the uh, float plane launch. Getting ready to get my hunting license in just a few minutes. And I uh, probably got about another I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes before we get on the bird and fly out of here. And uh, got two other guys with me from Wisconsin. So we'll uh, keep you documented on how this trip's going and let you know uh, how things go. We'll see you on the plane. So 
So if you've never been on a float plane, it's a pretty awesome event. Um, took off from Peter Strides, uh, flew about uh, 35, 40 minutes southwest to Area 37 uh, to the Gray Lake Lodge. And like I mentioned earlier, uh, as I got the, the base camp, uh, we I thought I was going to be with these two other hunters. We bonded along the way, and then all of a sudden we... I uh, got split up, and I got paired with two other guys from Maryland, which was good also, um, another former Army vet, and uh, another guy for, that works for the fisheries department there in Maryland. So uh, here we are coming in uh, for landing to uh, Gray Lake Lodge East. I imagine there's probably a west, but uh, this is a very old hunting camp, probably built in the 1950s, maybe 60s. Um, was owned evidently by another outfitter a lot, not too, too long ago, probably about seven years ago. Uh, but uh, there off to the right hand corner out of the windshield you can see that little strip coming out that's actually where the camp sits um, so it's a really neat place um, almost kind of isolated uh, except for the walking paths out so coming in for a landing on a float plane I thought it would be a lot rougher than it was um, there was a good wind coming in but uh, it was um, my first trip on a float plane really neat um, Enjoyed it a little loud. Definitely uh, bring some air pro uh, if you're going to uh, do a trip like this because it gets pretty hot in that aircraft. But uh, definitely the adventures you see coming in on our glide path final. Uh, Bob kind of shuts down, brings that RPMs down there, and we're on the ground. So right here to the right, you can see the dock, and uh, we kind of just start striking the water right about now, and then float on into the uh, the dock. So as you can see, the uh, it's wet in Newfoundland. They say if you wait 10 minutes, it'll rain. And I found that to be very true. Um, you know, one thing I noticed that you have to really learn the first couple hours of there is where to step. Um, it's pretty much equivalent to stepping on about a foot deep of sponge everywhere your foot impacts the ground. And uh, you learn not to stand or step in any of those little mud holes or water holes because they could be three inches but they could also be three feet deep you just never know um you know pretty much all of newfoundland is a big aquifer um it's muddy it's spongy so you just gotta watch where you're at so we uh missed out on a bit of the uh, overall action here um we climbed to a mountain first morning we uh, drove in a boat to uh down gray lake got to the top of the mountain and did an overwatch my guide and I, the night before, had already made an agreement that if we spotted a moose on the other side of the river, uh, come hell or high water, we were going to get one. And uh, so we made a uh, about a three-mile stalk from the top of the mountain down to the edge of the river. We, we had a very noticeable tree that we were able to use as a good landmark. And uh, first we spotted this cow out in the open, and then we saw the bull's antlers, and that was from, like I said, three miles away. And so we made our way down there, um, took a a couple hours to get there again hard walking started to rain kind of on and off um, on the way we actually had a bear um, that one of the other guides and his client was able to observe coming towards us and we had to kind of make a snap decision are we going to go for a moose or go for a bear in hindsight we probably should have went for the bear um, it was on our side of the river but we'll get into that in a few minutes so this moose took absolutely forever, watched yeah. him for about an hour and a half before he even yeah. decided to step out like you see him here. Yeah. And uh, even when he got to this point, he just took his own sweet yeah. time. Um, for about, like I said, an hour and yeah. a half, all I could see was antlers. I could never see the body, never see his head, yeah. just the tips of the antlers, uh, occasionally an yeah. ear. But uh, it's amazing how these things can move through the... Uh, yeah woods not make a lot of noise yeah. when they don't want to but when they do they just sounds yeah. like, you know panels of plywood hitting the hitting a yeah. tree so we uh yeah. we watched this guy for a long long time yeah. and uh he finally yeah. started making his way towards the edge of the river just didn't yeah. have a shot um and it was uh 250 yeah. meters across the river well i'll show you a little shot of the uh, range finder here in a minute but uh we were raking and calling. Um, Tristan, my guide, fantastic guide. If you go, if you go hunt with efforts, you should ask for him. Uh, 25 year old French Canadian uh, from Quebec, and uh, he's grown up hunting. Uh, 
guides in several cool. other places in Canada. Um, this is his fifth year guiding in this particular location. He actually was a apprentice cool. of a previous guy who'd worked at camp for almost 40 years. Cool. Um, so he knew he knew what he was doing, uh, good calling, and uh, knew right what to do. So um, the cool. kick around this one is uh, we if we did shoot this moose, we're going to have to get across the river at some point. Cool. And we had a game plan to go a little further down. Cool. Um, but again, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So this moose pretty much stood like he was for a half an hour, Why never moved, just kept an eye on that cow. Um, there was another cool. cow running around earlier, and it drifted off. So cool. we think there was another bull that was on the other side of this tree cool. line. But he just sat there cool. and uh, kind of meandered around back and forth on his cool. feet, never really did much, and uh, contemplated cool. taking a frontal shot on him i was confident i could make the shot um but i was not confident that the bullet would actually do what it needed to do to impact uh, that, that moose and take him down you know ethically so we waited a little bit continued to wait for the trees continued to call in hopes that he would start to move and it just seemed like an eternity um, i think tristan kept calling over said be patient so um then all of a sudden, it started to rain, and uh, as the rain started to pick up, um, that's when the moose uh, started to move a little bit. Cool. So Tristan was actually able to capture the, uh, the rangefinder uh, through his camera, which was actually pretty cool. So we had exactly uh, 250 yards across the, uh, the river. And so keep that in mind as we go a little further on, but um, it made it interesting for this next clip. Uh, not a hard shot, but uh, definitely knew it was going to be a long shot, but it just started raining and dumping on Ooh. us. Um, we, I was wearing rain gear at the time, um, but to be honest with you, it didn't help much. I was kind of already in, in the elements, but they started to feed, which was interesting. So kind of something I picked up when it starts raining, they start kind of going to feeding. And uh, this is when uh, he started to kind of do his thing and started to move as he started to take those steps. Uh, that's when he presented himself for that first shot. Real. Wait, wait. Wait, wait. 
he's good. Yeah. Okay, now he's good. I see you. He's good now. I see you hit right in the line. He's gonna go down. You got your moves, man. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. So at this point, I was pretty excited. <laughs> I think I had some explicatives that I uh, pushed out there, but uh, um, kind of surreal that we actually did this. Uh, but then we kind of came quickly to the realization that we were going to have to make our way across that river somehow and uh, and get that moose and uh, get it ready for transport. So um, it was pouring rain. And, thank you, uh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> we did it in oh the rain. Gosh. Now we oh. gotta cross that <laughs> <river>. <laughs> So we gotta cross the river that way. Get to the moose, which is on the other side. So uh, Tristan's looking at finding a spot to cross. I'm gonna go uh, put this up and we're gonna go try to get, get over there. Bring my GoPro, I suppose it's waterproof. We'll find out. That is a dedicated guide right there. He's <laughs> he's trying to find a place to cross, and uh, it ain't gonna happen right here. We're gonna actually swim across to uh, prepare the moose. So it's gonna be an interesting uh, affair. We'll get it done. We'll go have some fun. Get the other side, and uh, oh shit, I'm going under. This place is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. So in hindsight, it probably wasn't the best idea to shoot that moose across the river, but then we had to go get him. So uh, we did what we had to do. Uh, here's kind of an overview of what the picture looked like when the river was low. And it probably wouldn't have been that bad, but unfortunately Hurricane Fiona brought in a ton of water. So the banks were filled all the way to the top and it was over our head going about three feet in. So it was 250 meters exactly. We had it on the range finder. And we basically swam across this uh, this river. It was flowing pretty good. Um, ironically, the wind was actually blowing the other way. So here's another view. About the center line of the picture is where we actually swam across uh, to that yellow bog on the right hand side. And, uh, we got over there our moose. We used some wet weather bags to get across as little little buoys. Brought some uh, waders with us and floated them across to stay warm. But i tell you that merino wool shirt I was wearing was a godsend to have on the other way. That would keep me warm there. So all we had was my GoPro to take pictures. So we didn't get the most glamorous uh, hunting shots, but uh, we did uh, get a few good ones there. Um, I screwed up using the video feature of the GoPro, and we missed a lot of probably good footage, but... About uh, two hours to quarter them up, uh, bag them up, and we left everything on the other side of the river for the helicopter to pick up. But uh, overall, pretty epic hunt, uh, something I don't think most people would do. And a uh, nice old bull, probably pushing 12 years old. He was starting to regress in his uh, antler growth, but still a nice rack. Uh, crusty old bull. So I was very happy with what we got. down past that pond all the way to the river actually now we were over that way so right you see the river is that wide open yellow spot we're down there somewhere that's where we uh, shot the moose so long day we got it done super fun day long day up here in uh, Newfoundland, efforts, uh, hunting adventures, got my guy Tristan. Head 
back to camp by another uh, two or three kilometers and we'll be there. So we'll see you in a bit. So the walk back to camp is pretty cool. Um, we walk through a bog, up a path, uh, come into camp here. Um, you know, pretty short walk, but uh, it's just beautiful walking just in this little strip of pines uh, just to get to where you're at. So come on to camp. Um, this is coming from the dock area, running up there. Got the kitchen, our bunkhouse, two bedrooms, bathroom, uh, sleeps for a little wood stove, and then uh, back out here to the outhouse. And then you can run down here to the uh, back to where we came. Um, there's a little beach down here that you do your shooting range. Uh, you get in first thing, guides will take you out there. Get about 100 yards. They could probably get a little more if they wanted to, but it's a cute little beach. Uh, nice little hangout and just kind of peaceful away from everything. And there you are. All right, so later in the week, uh, I took the float plane out. Uh, again, pretty awesome to take off in a float plane if you've never done one before. Um, but uh, I will go over the bear hunt in a later uh, chapter here or episode. But uh, great trip with uh, Efforts Hunting Adventures. Uh, great bunch of guides, uh, Tristan, Dylan and Zach at Great Lake, and uh, we'll be booking again. Um, but you know, as you are flying out of here at Great Lake, you can see just about beautiful countryside it is. It's just uh, amazing uh, country, uh, great people. I never I didn't meet anybody who was a jerk, other than maybe some fellow Americans. Uh, but everybody in Newfoundland was absolutely fantastic. Uh, so uh, I will also go over, you know, later uh, a packing list and things that I wish I brought, things I brought too much of and uh, kind of what I think would be just right for a trip like this a week long in a float plane scenario um, I will say that if you are not physically fit in the least bit um, a float plane hunt's probably not for you you should probably consider uh, a driving hunt where they're using ATVs and you're only walking a couple hundred yards because uh, you know, we were walking kilometers just looking out the, the right side here we walked from that mountain top there all the way down to that river and that's about two and a half miles so you're going to be walking daily. That rock right there is actually where I shot my bear from. Uh, you look to the top of the rock to the right side of the tree line. That's how far I shot I had. So, um, but, uh, so plan on walking. Plan on walking up hills. Uh, try to train for it if you aren't in shape. Uh, but highly recommend uh, being in a, in a good position to do that walk. And uh, this is looking over almost the entire area we scoured Again, make it easy for your guide. Take care of your guides. Uh, tip them well. If, if, if you're, even if you're not successful, if they're providing you an experience that's, that you feel is uh, worthwhile, they're working their butt off. Uh, tip them as though you've got something. Uh, it shouldn't make a difference whether you connect with an animal or not. Um, if they're trying their, their hardest, because you know there's a lot of factors that come into play. And uh, you know, I, I took care of my guy with uh, some clothing and, uh, and, and monetary, you know, reimbursement, if you will. But uh, he did a phenomenal job. You know, if the guy's not doing a good job, that's maybe another story, and then you can talk to the outfitter there. But I, I will say that everybody in Bob Efford's uh, group, from what I, I heard, uh, were all great guides, great cooks, which is another thing. Tip your cook um, if, if you have one. Um, sometimes the guides cook were in some of the camps, but our cook, uh, Ivan, he's been with Efforts for like 20 some odd years. Great guy, great stories, great personality. And so, you know, I tipped him too because he provided a meal better than I probably would have got at home. So, but uh, enjoy the last part of this video. I'll go, again go over the bear hunt later uh, and some other videos on gear uh, and things to bring, some situations you might want to be aware of, both in customs. But uh, overall, awesome experience. Um, would do again. And uh, Bob Efford is a great outfitter, he got good communication. Um, He's, I mean, I'm booking right now for my next trip out there. So, um, but hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, appreciate your time and uh, watching this, and uh, hope we can uh, hope this gives you a little bit of information about what a new moose hunt would be like. And uh, good luck on your hunt.